Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. We just want to thank you for joining us today. We want to thank you for participating with us in this venture. And I pray that the overview and that the reading of the word of the Lord would be a blessing to you today, even as we go through it together. We are back in the book of Isaiah today. And today is going to be quite a short reading in that we're just doing chapters 35 and 36 today. But even though it's short, it's quite an impactful reading. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time in the overview, but just concentrate and just meditate on these passages because there's so much in there that, that can be picked up. When we get to chapter 35, we see that this chapter deals with the joyful flourishing of Christ's kingdom. And it talks so beautifully of what we can expect in the kingdom of Christ. Now, this is at a time when the Lord is ruling and the Lord is on the throne of David and he is ministering to the people. So we have a timeline then that we, are, uh, that we have in our minds. But there's such a beautiful verse, verse 8, that I just wanted to speak about. It says, And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. Now, this is something that is quite dear to us in that we know that the Lord says He is the way, the truth, and the life. The early Christians were known as followers of the way. And so when you read this verse and you see how many times it says the highway. Now, if we can take it and just look at it, it is not just a highway like we would assume, but it is the high way and then it says an away and the wayfaring men that walk thereon now this is so beautiful this is the lord declaring his path himself as the way and we see that in the new testament then and we can just take that into light there then we look at chapter 36 and this chapter deals with the invasion of judah by sennacherib king of assyria and we see that Sennacherib sends Rabshakeh with a message to King Hezekiah. And Rabshakeh delivers these blasphemous persuasions to the people. And he talks about things that really he does not understand. And so take time in going through this because we're going to look at it. And you'll see that he's speaking about things in a way and telling the people how they need not trust in the Lord. And how the king of Assyria has this great power and this might to do as he wishes and as he wills. And so when we look at it, just contemplate that, taking into account the typology here of the king of Assyria and what that represents and the Lord and the way that Israel is supposed to be walking after the Lord, the way Judah is supposed to be walking after the Lord and the things that they have done to forsake the Lord their God. So just take that into account as you go through this passage. We're going to leave it there. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Chapter 35. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those. The wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. 
and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Chapter 36. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the defensed cities of Judah and took them. And the king of Assyria sent Rabshakeh from Lachish to Jerusalem unto King Hezekiah with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. Then came forth unto him Eliakim, Hilkiah's son, which was over the house, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, Asaph's son, the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Say ye now to Hezekiah, Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? I say, sayest thou, but they are but vain words, I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed, on Egypt, whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. But if thou say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away and said to Judah and to Jerusalem, he shall worship before this altar? Now therefore give pledges, I pray thee, to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give thee 2,000 horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? And am I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said unto me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim and Shebna and Joah unto Rabshakeh, Speak, I pray thee, unto thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it, and speak not to us in the Jews' language in the ears of the people that are on the wall. But Rabshakeh said, Hath my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men that sit upon the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and eat ye every one of his vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Beware, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arphad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? And have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who are they among all the gods of these lands that have delivered their land out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But they held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim the son of Hilkiah, that was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah the son of Asaph the recorder, to Hezekiah, with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rabshakeh.